It is such a pleasure to be here with you all. Welcome everyone to this session. Today we are speaking about stand out social communication. And honestly, just to you know, set the t set the scene, set the tone. This is definitely like a reflective session. This is not your 102 ways to you know stand out on social media. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's just not what this session is all about. It's definitely you know reflective, looking inward, and speaking about how you know we can use our digital voices boldly for Jesus Christ in the 21st century. So that is the energy I am coming with you on today. So I guess just to kick us off, um, I fun fact about my name, it's a Nigerian name and it means joy, it's pronounced Ayo. And you know, I love to introduce myself in that way. And I love to say that, you know, when I am presenting myself, because this hasn't always been my story where I've been this bold, where I've been able to use my voice in such a bold way. So it gives me a lot of joy to just, you know, say that about myself. And I guess that leads us nicely onto me just wanting to kick us off by sharing my personal salvation story, how I have come to know Jesus Christ. So just to give you some context really quickly, I <clears throat> was born and bred in a Christian home, but I definitely wouldn't say that I myself was a Christian. And what I mean by that was I wasn't an active, you know, follower of Christ. It's like, it's like, okay, yeah, we've grown up in a Christian home, but hey ho, like, you know, you just do your own thing. Or should I say, I just did my own thing. And, you know, I guess I just lived my life in the way that I wanted to, you know, I definitely was a kind person or I, I'd like to think I was a kind person, but just in terms of like being submitted to Christ, being submitted to his word, I thought the Bible was pretty boring. Like I, I growing up, I can't really tell you that I ever opened the Bible. Yes, we'd go to church, but I just didn't really engage with it. And I guess just growing up, I just, you know, didn't have a personal relationship with God. But let's fast forward to... 2017 I was um well graduated from university in 2015 and shortly after graduating I started freelancing for this company as a speaker and essentially the the founder of this organization he was a Christian a pastor little did I know and uh he would you know when I would share my story in schools of just you know overcoming low self-esteem and a lot of the stuff we would do was to do with growth mindset he said to me one time he was like I you're called to speak to girls and young women and I was like what are you talking about <laughs> I had no idea what he meant but fast forward he would always encourage me and tell me that I had a story that I had a voice and I just basically you know he would really encourage me in that fast forward to the end of 2017 I found myself in church and there was just a desire for me to want to do this Christian walk properly like instinctively there was just this voice on the inside of me saying I oh there's more to you there's more to you so I gave my life to Jesus Christ that day on New Year's Eve 2017 and even though I didn't know what was going to happen I didn't know what the next steps were going to be I knew that I was making the right decision so I wanted to kick off by sharing, you know, my personal story, because it's not that I've always been a follower of Christ. I've not always been a disciple, but since 2017, I've progressive, progressively been on this journey where I've wanted to lay down more of my life and quite literally be who God has called me to be and just be a better disciple of Jesus Christ, right? So in terms of, you know, me giving my life to Jesus Christ that day on New Year's Eve 2017, and then me having this amazing man who ended up being, who is still till this day, you know, a mentor and a strong voice in my life, it, it, I began the journey of uncovering purpose or discovering purpose and realizing, you know, what it is that I'm supposed to do here on this earth. And a big part of that was actually using my voice to speak life into other people. Now, I remember before I got saved on that day, 2000, at New Year's Eve 2017, I had about 200 followers on Instagram. And 
I remember saying to him one time, so it went like 200 and then it was increasing bit by bit. And I remember saying to him one time, I was just like, oh, like, you know, I want like 10K followers because, you know, if I have like 10K followers, then I could do da, 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 da. Just loads of stuff, I guess, like, you know, vanity metrics. I was thinking that 10K followers was suddenly going to give me this status. It was suddenly going to give me this, you know, sense of worth and all of this stuff, just vanity metrics. And he said to me, I'll you want 10k followers but what are you doing with the followers you have right now <laughs> I was like did, did someone just slap me on the face or something because <laughs> that was a <laughs> that was a pretty loud comeback and he just asked me he said what are you doing with the followers you have and he said you see you're so focused on the followers that it is that you want that you're not focused on the followers that you have therefore you're not nurturing the followers that you have so why I had this desire you know, to, to, you know, have thousands of followers because it was going to give me worth. At that time, I didn't understand what he was saying to me, but fast forward to 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and by God's grace years to continue, I realized that the focus isn't on, oh, am I going to get followers? So I'm going to get worth am I going to get, can I get followers so that I can have status? Oh, can I get followers so I can get a blue tick? No, the followers is actually for the purpose of the gospel. The followers are actually to spread the message of Christ. The followers are actually to get more people. The followers are actually to serve humanity. The followers are actually to show love, the love of Jesus Christ to the audience that I have. So with that in mind, I just want to share, you know, or remind us all about the kingdom agenda. And you know, when we speak about the kingdom agenda, the kingdom of God, the kingdom, our heavenly father, you know, in a nutshell, what is God's kingdom agenda? Well, you know, if I have to boil it down to three things, and I'm gonna use scripture to speak about this because we get this from the word of God, right? First and foremost is to proclaim the gospel of Christ to the world. That is literally it. And we see that in Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20. So I'm going to read quite a bit of scripture right now. So this first scripture is Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. And it says this, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. So that's the first mandate, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. The second mandate, the second mandate we have in terms of, you know, God's kingdom agenda is meeting the needs of people and empowering them to fulfill their destinies in Christ. And now let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 to 11. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 to 11. And it says, and God is able to make every grace overflow to you so that in every way, always having everything that you need, not some of what you need, everything you need, you may excel in every good work. As it is written, he distributed freely. He gave to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now the one who provides seed for the sower and bread for, sorry, and bread for food will also provide and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. Powerful. So that's the second thing, meeting the needs of people, the people of God, and empowering them to fulfill their destinies in Christ. And then the third thing is to serve humanity. And this is the one that challenges us, right? For many of us, if you're okay, let me speak for myself because maybe, <laughs> maybe you're not affected by this. This is something that challenges me to serve humanity in a selfless way. And we've got two scriptures for this: Matthew twenty-five, verse forty, and Isaiah fifty-eight, verse ten. 
So I'll read the first one, which is Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. And it says this, and the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And for context, this is literally Jesus saying how we treat others is basically a reflection of our love for him. So we can say, oh, Lord, I love you. I love you. But how are we treating the people that we see here on, on earth? Because it's easy in a sense, or well, depending on, you know, where we are in our journeys, it can be easier to say we love, you know, a being, a God that we can't see. But then God is saying, oh, you really love me? Okay, cool. Like, show me with your actions by how you treat people here on earth, the people you know, the people that you don't know. And this by no means is not, is it, is it speaking that we, you know, overcross boundaries and, you know, have no boundaries? No, but it's just, you know, love is sacrifice. It's, you know, going out of our way for other people. And then the sec second scripture on serving humanity is Isaiah 58, chapter 10. Sorry, <laughs> chapter 58, verse 10. And it says this, if you make sure that the hungry and oppressed have all that they need, then your light will shine in the darkness and even your bleakest moments will be bright as clear day. So those, so speaking about the kingdom agenda, so why did I bring up these three points in terms of, you know, the kingdom agenda? It's going back to this whole idea of um, standout social communication. I really wanted to, you know, have loads of followers and I really wanted to be out there so that I could, you know, I guess have my agenda on the line, you know, my self-esteem, <laughs> tick box or so I thought my self-esteem would be, you know, ticked, you know, checked. I thought I'd have more worth, I thought I'd have more value, all of that stuff, all of these um, vanity metrics. So I'm going on to social media with my agenda, but the Holy Spirit, by God's grace of using this mentor of mine and progressively over the years, the more I've been in his word and the more I'm growing and developing and nurturing myself and just being with God and coming to know him, I'm realizing that, oh, so my social media is not really for my agenda, it's for your kingdom agenda. And the reason why it's for his kingdom agenda is because he has literally saved us. He said, we are no longer bonded to the to not being in close connection with him, like by virtue of Jesus Christ coming to die on a cross for us. He made what was once a separation. He's now said that, yo, you're close to me again. So because you're close to me again, because you are my children, I literally need you to go and rescue my, your other brothers and sisters and let them come to know about the gospel. Let them come to know about the saving grace. Let them come to know that they are not alone and that literally I am their shepherd. I am their king. I am their friend. So this is why, you know, I'm mentioning these three points about, you know, God's special kingdom agenda. So speaking about, you know, God's special agenda, his kingdom agenda. Now I want to speak about, you know, encouragement to us, you know, us on our social media platforms, whether it be, you know, professional social media, whether it be, you know, our personal social media, whatever it is, my encouragement first and foremost to all of us is that we are salt and light. You know, I might be speaking to some extremely extroverted people like myself right now, or I might be speaking to people who are, you know, not so extroverted, maybe somewhat a bit of introvert and a bit of extrovert or straight up, you know, introvert, like I don't want to do any of this. But, you know, if you are listening to me, if you are tuning into this right now, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you've said, I want to do this life with you, Jesus, he's called us to be salt and light. And that's, I know, is one of the things that this conference is about, you know, the fact that we are the salt and light of the earth. And, you know, it took me a while when I first got saved, when I first gave my life to Jesus Christ. I, I didn't really get the whole salt thing. I was just like, yeah, OK, cool. The light thing. I get it. I have a light in my room. Yeah, OK, cool. I get it. Right. But over time, progressively, as I've come to understand salt, I've come to realize that when you put salt in food, there's a different type of flavor. Like there's just the energy just shifts, right? When you put salt in food and progressively as the Holy Spirit, as God has been able to reveal to me, he's like, yo, you are the flavor, but it's not your flavor. It's like my flavor operating through you and you're the vessel, right? But it's just the fact that we are the salt and light in the earth, uh, of the earth. We are 
Christ ambassadors. So with that and our social media communication, and, you know, I'm not, and, and just to clarify for anyone who might be wondering, I'm not necessarily saying that, you know, every single day has to be a message like Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, come and be saved, come and do this. No, it's actually more so about the way we live our lives internally. So it's like, what do I mean by this? You know, the more time we're spending in our word, the more time we're submitting to Christ, the more time we are learning to become and look more like Jesus Christ, it actually, there's an aroma, there's a, there's a, there's a flow, there's a, there's a sense that just oozes out from the, oozes out from inside of us, right? So what that looks like on our social media communication, it has an, it has an impact on the type of posts we're posting, the type of pictures we're pitching and um, we're, we're posting. And even for example, someone DMs us or someone follows us, sending them a DM. Like, hey, thank you for following me. If there's anything I can do to, you know, help in terms of content, um, then please just let me know. Or if you're not someone who posts, for example, you know, every day on social media, maybe because you don't deem yourself to be an influencer, whatever that means in this day and age, right? But if you don't deem yourself to be an influencer, if you have any sort of social media presence, DMing your followers, DMing people who connect with you, seeing how people's days are. Because remember, we're living in a very busy, busy, busy world, but it's like not a lot, not a lot of people are taking time to actually just care for people. You know, so people seeing that we care about them, it's like, oh, this is different. And why is it different? Because we are followers of Christ. But remember, that can only happen as a byproduct of the more time we're spending with Jesus Christ, the more time we're spending in our quiet time. And as a result of us realizing God's love for us, which is progressive and which we're continually going to dig deeper and deeper to, deeper into, we're then able to show that love and give off that love some more and some more and some more. So I hope that encourages everyone who, you know, might not be on the, oh, I, I don't have a posting schedule and I don't do this. No, it's more so about the byproduct of what we can do and what we could possibly do. And we'll think about some questions for reflection before we leave this session today. So that's the first piece of encouragement that I have for you, that we are salt and light of the earth. The second thing is we are called to shine. So this is something that people may not believe about me, <laughs> but even as an extrovert, I have moments where I get shy. <laughs> people are like, I, oh, you get shy? Really? I'm just like, hello, I'm human. Okay. But it's hard for people to believe this. And, you know, for me personally, one of the things that sometimes I struggle with is shining because I think I don't want to be too much. I don't want to be too out there you know, and that is something that just goes against scripture because scripture says we are called to shine. So on our social media posts or, you know, even in our day-to-day -day lives, it could be, say, for example, posting something that's uncomfortable. It could be us putting out an encouraging message to someone or on our Instagram stories or on our LinkedIn stories or on our Facebook stories putting something out you know maybe praying for someone or maybe just saying hey I just wanted to encourage someone you know when the Holy Spirit presses something on our hearts and we just have an urge to say it, it might be uncomfortable but we're called to shine and the scripture speaks about you know you can't put a light on a on a, um, a light and then use a basket to cover the light it's just like we're supposed to shine so that's encouragement for us to continue to just remember the fact that we are called to shine, that the word of God has said we are called to shine. We are called to be light. Right. And then I've got another thing about, you know, using our digital voices to nurture our following. I've kind of touched on this already, but it's just like, you know, checking in with our following, depending on if people are following us on a regular basis, doing, you know, when someone follows you, just say, for example, saying, hey, thank you for following me. I know if you have um, maybe thousands of followers, this might be hard to keep up with, but if possible, getting a team to just help do that, manage that. If you're someone who doesn't have, you know, so much following, again, thinking about what can I do to nurture my following? You know, sometimes it's so easy. I'm, I'm learning more about psychology and sometimes we automatically want to be like, no, nope, can't do this. But I'm learning to challenge myself, realizing that my brain is my goodness. My brain is so intelligent that I don't even know how intelligent it is. 
the more I'm realizing that this brain was made to work. I'm like, yo, I need to start making my brain work, <laughs> you know? And what that looks like in the context of nurturing our following is thinking, okay, what can I do to nurture my following? What does it even mean to nurture my following? I could have two followers on Instagram. I could have five followers on Instagram. I could have 5,000. I could have 2,000. How many other, you know, you have, what can I do to nurture my following? And what nurturing looks like to you and what the Holy Spirit and, and part of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what does this look like? You know, and given an example of nurturing our following, uh, I've said this already in a sense, but speaking about being bold, uh, I did a spoken word piece on New Year's Eve last year. And it was called, it's called I Have a New Name and it was speaking about identity in Christ. Now I did this at my church and beginning of January, Holy Spirit says, I want you to post this on your LinkedIn. I was like, what? Post this? Excuse me? LinkedIn. I was like, no, LinkedIn is too professional. Post it on my Instagram. Yep, yeah, no problem. I could do that. Post it on my LinkedIn. That's a bit uncomfortable, Lord. Anyways, this prompting on the inside of me was like, I'll are you going to do it for me though? So I was like, okay, yay, here we go. And in full transparency, I was really, really nervous because I just, I just thought, oh, I don't know if this is part of my brand. I was just thinking about so many different stuff. Anyways, finally in obedience, decided to post this video on LinkedIn. I kid you not, I looked at the stats just before I came on this um, session so I could share. I could see this was posted nine months ago now. This this video has almost gotten to 30,000 views, 30,000 views. I've had people DMing me as a result of that video saying, I will thank you so much. People sharing with me, you know, their desire to want to come to know Christ. And it's just been amazing, mind blowing. That was through me being bold enough to share the gospel in my own particular way and obedience to Christ and that for me was also a way for me to nurture my following because someone actually said to me we don't hear stuff like this on LinkedIn so for you to come and basically feed me with this thank you so much so wanted to encourage you with that and then also speak about the contentment with our followers sometimes we can think about just numbers but actually, probably I've said this already, but if we have two following, two people following us, 10 people following us, the contentment with the number of followers that we have. So as we come to, you know, wrapping up this part of the segment, I just want to leave us with some questions to reflect on. And the first question I want to encourage us to reflect on is this. Do people know we are Christian? I said this in the description, it's very easy for some of us to separate our Christian life from our everyday life, our Sunday life, from our rest of the week life, but we are 24 seven Christian. We are ambassadors of Christ. Do people that follow us know we are Christian? That's the first question for reflection. The second question for reflection is, are we praying for the people that are following us? Are we? <laughs> And then the third question for reflection is, what practical ways can we start or continue to use our digital voice boldly for Jesus Christ in the 21st century? Stand up social communication in a nutshell, just to wrap us up, is all about us first coming to know and educate and remind ourselves and meditate on the love of Christ and what Jesus Christ has come to do for us. And then we are to go out there, make disciples of the nations, whatever that looks like to you in your own personal way, in your own community, with your social media presence, and essentially just serve humanity with the love of Jesus Christ. Is it easy? No, no, no. But with the Holy Spirit empowering us and enabling us, then it's a new day every day and he gives us the grace and the mercy to do so. My name is Ayo. Thank you so much for tuning into this session and it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you.